Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video I will show you how to calculate the Sharpe ratio. Now I'm currently on Google's website, it's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it easy to start programming in Python. So all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So if you're going to code along with me, go ahead and click on file then click on new notebook where a new tab will open up for you and then eventually a new cell will open up for you. Okay, and in this cell, I'm going to put in a description in comments. So I'm just going to put in a description about the program. All right, so I'm going to type here, this program calculates the sharp ratio. Okay, so the sharp ratio is named after William Sharp, and it is a measure of return that takes into account the risk involved in achieving that return. So it basically compares an asset or portfolio's excess return for a given period of time to its standard deviation. And of course, standard deviation is a measure of its volatility. Okay, so the ratio is used to evaluate past performance or possible future performance. And so we're going to create this sharp ratio here using Python. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button here in the top left. And now in this cell, I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using for this program. So I'm going to import pandas as pd, and I'm going to import numpy as np. All right, and then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And this, of course, will let me know if I made any mistakes. Alrighty, it looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. Also, before we continue, I should say that the material in this video is purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice. So invest at your own discretion. Also, you can get the code or data set or just support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash computer science. And I will leave a link for that in the description below. Also, if you like the videos on the channel, then be sure to click that subscribe and like button and to be notified about new videos from this channel hit that bell notification all right so with all that being said let's continue so the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to upload the data for the stock all right and in order to do this i'm going to use google's library so from google.colab i'm going to import files and then i'm going to type files.upload to upload the file. So let me go ahead and run this cell, click on choose files, and I'm going to upload this aapl.csv file. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell now that that file has been uploaded, and let's go ahead and get the data. All right, so I'm going to create a variable called data. And I'm going to set it equal to pd.read underscore csv. And I'm going to read in that aapl.csv file. And then I want to show the data. So I'm just going to type data here. All right, let's go ahead and run this cell. And now we can see the data. All right, so we see that this data contains information for the Apple Incorporation from January 4th, 2010, all the way to May 3rd, 2023. All right, so it contains 3,356 rows of data, and of course, seven columns, which we see those seven columns up top here. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now in this cell, I want to calculate the daily returns. So I'm going to create a new column and I'm going to call it returns. And then I'm going to set it equal to the adjusted close price. So I want the adjusted close price returns. And in order to get that, I can just type dot PCT underscore change and input the value one. Okay, and just like that, I have calculated the returns. So let's go ahead and run this cell. And now let's create another cell. So here in this cell, I'm going to define the risk-free 
rate. Okay, so the risk-free rate represents the interest an investor would expect from an absolutely risk-free investment over a specified period of time. So I'm going to create a variable called risk underscore free underscore rate. And I'm going to set this equal to 2% or 0 0.02 divided by 252 trading days. All right, so I'm expecting 2% interest over 252 trading days in a year because there's approximately 252 trading days within a year. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. Let's create a new cell. Now, in this cell, I'm going to calculate the excess returns. So what's excess returns? Well, excess returns are how much more money you make than you are supposed to make when you invest your money in something like a stock or a fund. So I'm going to create a new column for our data frame data, and I'm going to call it excess underscore returns. And I'm going to set this equal to data returns minus the risk free rate. Okay, and that should give us our excess returns. So let's go ahead and run this cell. All right. I'm going to create another cell. Now in this cell, with all this information, I can calculate the sharp ratio, which again is a measure of return that takes into account the risk involved in achieving that return. So I'm going to create a variable called sharp underscore ratio. And I'm going to set it equal to the square root of 252, the number of trading days, times the excess returns dot mean. So I'm going to get the mean of the excess returns divided by the standard deviation of the excess returns. So that's just data excess returns dot STD left parentheses and right parentheses. So that's the standard deviation. So let's go ahead and run this. Also, I guess I should note that we can change the formula up a little bit as well. So you may see the formula for the sharp ratio somewhere else a little differently. And we could have did uh, a different formula. Like I said before, it basically would be sharp ratio is equal to mp dot square root of 252 times the data returns dot mean minus the risk free rate all of that divided by our returns standard deviation okay and we can check this later on to make sure that they are the same value using these two formulas so let's go ahead and run this cell let's create a new cell and now I'm going to print the sharp ratio all right so I'm just going to print sharp ratio Okay, and let's put the value or the variable sharp ratio here so that we can actually see the values or sorry, the value. Let's go ahead and run this. And so now we can see that this stock, Apple's stock here, has a sharp ratio of 0 0.9268. And then you see all the rest of the digits following that. So a sharp ratio below one is considered bad. A sharp ratio of one is considered acceptable to good. A sharp ratio of two is rated as very good and a sharp ratio of three or higher is considered excellent. All right, so let's just double check this second formula here. 
I'm just going to uncomment it here and I'm going to comment this formula out that we used before. I'm going to rerun this cell and I'm going to run this cell and we can see that we get the same number and that lets you know that that these two formulas are equivalent okay so it is important to note that the sharp ratio is not the only metric that should be used to evaluate a stock other metrics such as the PE ratio the dividend yield and earnings growth rate should also be considered and again I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that so I just hope that you all really enjoyed this video Thank you for watching and a special thanks to the Patreon supporters on Patreon.com. Again, if you would like to become a supporter of this channel or just get the code or just get the data set, then I will leave a link to the Patreon page, which is Patreon.com slash Computer Science in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video.